Well, hello everybody. How's it going? Uh, this is a little bit of a different video. I don't, I don't normally do stuff like this, but uh, maybe I'll start if this has a good reception. We'll see. But I just wanted to share a new addition to my uh, retro game collection. As I've shown in the past, I have quite a collection of SNES games, NES, Genesis games, you know, the, you know, the usual re retro game stuff. But I was actually looking at a lot of different videos online about that sort of like 16-bit era, which is like my favorite video game era by by a lot. I was real into that whole Sega Genesis versus Super Nintendo era, but what a lot of people don't talk about nearly as much is uh, the TurboGrafx-16. For retro game enthusiasts, they're pretty familiar with the TurboGrafx-16, but for more casual gamers, it is lesser known, for sure, because it is the, the distance bronze medalist of the 16-bit war. I don't actually know who technically won, the Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis, or how you even like, or what even counts as winning. In my heart, they're both winners. But the TurboGrafx-16 actually had a pretty good library of games. And the more I looked into it, the more I was like, you know what? I wouldn't mind getting myself one of those. And my local uh, retro game shop, Game Deals, in New Westminster, actually they had two TurboGrafx-16 for a price because that wasn't actually too bad. It's a little pricier than finding a used NES or used SNES or something like that. Um, but it's actually not like, it's not gonna break the bank. So as a birthday present for myself, I saved up some of my tips and I got myself a TurboGrafx-16 and I am really looking forward to giving it a shot. Now it came with a controller and you know, power supply, all that stuff. I did have to buy a game, but I figured uh, what better one to get than Keith Courage in Alpha Zones. Uh, this was the pack in title for the TurboGrafx-16 when it first came out, so very apropos. Unfortunately, uh, some of the additions to the library are a little pricey, but that's what happens when you start to swim a little deeper in the retro gaming pool. So the, the TurboGrafx-16 is a, nice, a pretty nice design. Um, it has a detachable back. This is where you can plug in the power supply, which I'll show you. <clears throat> the power supply, you can just plug in back here. There's a little slit and basically you can cover it up and the cord just hangs out right there like it ain't no thing and it keeps it nice and discreet if you know keeping a power supply discreet is something that you want to do. Another thing that's a little bit different with the uh, TurboGrafx-16 is that it doesn't take cartridges like the Genesis or the Super Nintendo, or rather it comes with these little cards. You see, it's nice and thin like this and you slide it in like so. It's a nice little locking mechanism to keep it in while the game is running. I think that's kind of nifty. Uh, it is just something that's a little different, a little very small, compact. It, with it being so, so much smaller, um, having a bigger collection doesn't take up nearly as much space, so that's kind of cool. I love my collection, I love having lots of cartridges, but it is becoming apparent that this is a hobby that can potentially take up a lot of space, so heads up future me. So the cable I got was this nice little old school RF cable. This just plugs into the side, like so. And then if you have an RF connector in your TV, you can plug it into there. Now with my specific TV, this setup didn't work out so well. I have, I used to connect to the Genesis through RF, and the picture was actually not too bad, but for whatever reason, something about mixing the old tech with the new tech, um, or maybe it is a problem with the cord, the TurboGrafx-16 looked like complete unplayable garbage on my TV, so. That's not going to do anyone any good. Clearly this was a big enough issue that this was something that was addressed by, uh, by somebody who knew how to fix it. So I picked up Hyperkin, put together this uh, nifty adapter that um, basically makes it so that it, uh, basic, basic composite AV cables can connect to it and then um, you can plug it in via composite cables which is great. It's great to have the options. Um, I also wound up connecting my Genesis via composite cables for the sake of being able to record video for for this channel, actually. So the back of the Turbo Graphics has this connector here. It's a hot green little gizmo, which is not amazing to look at, but hey, it fits. So you just plug that into the back, 
bada bing bada boom bada bang it also came with some AV cables just in case you're always like in my case I think I'm using all of mine so you just plug it into the back like that the downside is you cannot well it's like this reattach the back so you just have to keep it separate hopefully you don't lose it but there you go TurboGrafx-16 with its hot green butt is now compatible with my TV and I tested it out and it looks great actually it looks really good for an old console like this uh, picture is beautiful so as you see here the little card just slips right into the turbo graphics locks into place just like that you turn it on it locks it further now here i was testing out the rf connection and uh now the previous time i had oh. done it it looked like garbage but it turns out this time it actually looked pretty good and so i must have just done something wrong and this is me with the composite cable set up so as you see it actually has very little difference from the rf setup so i guess you could really go either way if your objective is just to play the games There's no difference, is there? No. Okay. Okay, so so this time when I plugged in the RF cable, uh, it actually looked and sounded just fine. It actually looked about on par with the with the composite cables. Um, so I must have been doing something wrong the first time. I was really trying, so I don't know what happened, but that's okay. The AV adapter is a good investment anyway, because if I'm gonna capture any footage from this thing, that's the way I gotta do it. Because RF, I don't have anything to connect to RF that way. Another weird trait of the TurboGrafx-16 is that it only has one single port for a controller. Um, the controller's kind of cool. It has this little, little, little turbo feature, kind of a throwback to the NES. But uh, you know, it's not a, it's not a bad controller. It's, it feels pretty good in the hands. It's responsive. It's it's a pretty pro controller. Um, the, just the weird thing is the fact that there is only one controller port. Like even for the time, having two controller ports. That was normal. Both the Master System and the NES had two controller ports. For whatever reason, it seemed like the TurboGrafx-16 took a step back from all the innovations of the time. Uh, and that's probably why I want to be the Distance Bronze, if you ask me. If, if there was one huge fault to the system, it is the single controller port. But fear not, citizens, we have the TurboTap for all of your multiplayer retro game needs. Gaming is a social experience. Like, that is something... Like, yeah, we play video games on our own, but we love playing games with other people. That's why online gaming has become such a thing, and why co-op multiplayer games are so sought after. Because we love that social experience of gaming, so to make that social aspect harder definitely makes sense as to why it wound up trailing behind in the marketplace. Though for a little while, it was a top contender. So yeah, that's basically it. Just wanted to show off my little TurboGrafx-16. It's kind of the... One of the cooler things in my collection. Again, I only have one game so far, but I will be getting more, and uh, maybe I'll share with those on the channel. If you are interested in that kind of thing, uh, let me know in the comments down below. And if you're not, then uh, I don't even know why you're here, frankly. Have you heard of the TurboGrafx-16? Have you played the TurboGrafx-16? I would love some recommendations in the comments down below for great games. Um, I know all about EverDrives, and uh, so I, I'm. I might go down that route because I know some of the best games are uh, definitely on the pricier side, but if I can get real copies, I would love to get real copies. So please let me know what are great games in the comments down below, and hopefully they're affordable, um, and if not, hey, maybe they're worth saving up for. Um, so let me know what you think, and thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.